Okay, so thank you for being here. There's a lot going on in the world. Uh, we're going to try to get to a lot of it. But, you know, they say all politics is local. And there's nothing more local than your face. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'm talking about the mask. Oh, the mask, the mask, you're right. <laughs> I feel like of all the things going on in the world, what people really are thinking about is that this week they said, because people fly a lot, they're on planes, and they said, I mean, I saw the videos of people erupting in cheers that we don't have to wear a mask on the plane anymore. Some of you may have seen the press release today that a judge overturned the mask mandate. My company is yeah. Effective immediately, employees and customers may choose whether they would like to wear a mask. We encourage you. Masks will be optional this evening for all crew and passengers as well. Masks now optional for employees, customers, following White House. You know, Now, there's also, you hear from the uh, people will die crowd, and they're right, people will die. People will always die. I'm against people dying, but they're always going to die. <laughs> and you actually can't stop it. And masks, really, we're finding out a particularly ineffective way of stopping it. I, I just wish it didn't have to be political, because I see a lot of people now on the news saying, I'm still going to wear it. <laughs> it just becomes a amulet and a symbol of your party, and it should just be about the science. Well, it's a symbol oh. of our stupidity that we would turn something like that into an amulet, right. you know? <laughs> yes. I mean, I understand why people feel that way, but it doesn't, when I see young people walking alone outside with the mask, I, I want to punch them. No. I, I do. <laughs> I think we're making PPE personal again. That's what we're doing, PPE. and, and it's personal protective equipment. And oh. now, and it, the the word was for the whole pandemic that, that your mask protects me and mine protects you. Okay. Well, now the New York Times and other media outlets and public health officials are doing a thing that I call "Now It Can Be Told," which is where they tell you the thing that right wingers and open school advocates have been bitching about for six months <laughs> is actually true, <laughs> even though they were telling you it with misinformation right. before. Um, so your your mask, if you have a quality one, can protect you. Um, and there is a limit to how long we can go before we modulate to a new form of living. We, we have new tools. We have knowledge about this uh, virus. We have new ventilation systems. Thankfully, planes are good. Um, and we have, uh, we know that masks are a minimally helpful tool. But we told a lot of people they were maximally helpful. And that was a bad idea, especially for the vulnerable. But wouldn't they get it just when they said, you don't have to wear it while you're eating. Yes. Wouldn't just that. Yeah. Or I see the basketball players playing, gouging each other's eyes out, and then they go to the bench right, and they put the mask on. Yeah. Uh, Saturday Night Live, they do the sketches, and then at the end when they say goodnight, they have the mask on. It's like, am I, am I, what world but am I living in where people are not seeing this insanity? This in the very, very beginning, even the CDC said, oh, you better not wear a mask because you'll trap the COVID close to your face and you'll die instantly that way. <laughs> and I remember thinking, you know, because I've had cancer and, and it's like whenever your counts are low, they say, oh, wear a mask, you'll be safer. And then they realized, oh, they were just lying. They were just trying to save the masks. Oops. You know, and it's, and then they're like, why have you lost faith in America's institutions? Well, because you lied to us at a really scary time, and we could have handled the truth. You can't handle the truth! You know, you know what I find so sad? I was at the mall. Well, that's sad. You at the mall? Not okay. alone, it's sad. <laughs> I just, I was, we, were off, we were off last week. I haven't been to a mall in a long time. I felt like the mermaid from Splat. This is it! It's Crazy Eddie's greatest clearance sale ever! Crazy Eddie's smashing prices on specially marked items in his enormous inventory! Stereo equipment, video equipment, color TVs, car stereo CDs, telephone equipment, disco equipment, and professional products! Right. I, 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 I didn't know. I literally didn't know how to buy something. I was like, can you just take cash? I'm old and rich. Here, just take the cash. I can't figure this out. It was very sad, but... Like, what was really sad, this is uh, the Century City Mall here, a lot of us outside, right. the only people wearing masks were like 20. That's who is wearing the masks, the people least likely to die from it. Right. They feel like they have been indoctrinated 
in a way that the only people less likely are the toddlers, right? right. Uh, who we mask uh, incessantly. I know. I think at the beginning of the pandemic, the word was uh, "stay safe, stay home." Okay, well, that's a very simple uh, public health message, but it actually discouraged and even demonized your rational risk analysis for yourself, which is something that we have to be engaged in. Um, we have to decide. Okay, well, what is my risk level? Two-year-olds don't have the same risk level as 88-year-olds. That's just not true. Being indoors doesn't have the same risk level as being outdoors. But we did seemingly all the opposite things, which is get the kids out of school who are least vulnerable, hurt them that way, close the parks and the hiking trails, which is a thing that we did, um, and then have indoor outdoor spaces to eat that are actually just indoor again. Right. <laughs> you can take your mask off. Right? I, I mean, it's, it's, it's not it's trustworthy. Just, That's the problem in the end. I don't know how a country this dumb can survive. <laughs> um, I, It shows this. how great we are, really, that we can be this dumb and we're here. We're, and we're the yeah. top. We survived. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying the competition is true. Yeah. It is. It's true. But also, when I saw the kids with the masks, all I could think of is anxiety. And yes. then right on cue, I'm reading Jonathan Haidt's new article about why we have this levels of anxiety among teenagers that is just off the charts. Now, this is what I read. 44% of high school students said they felt sad or hopeless. Now, a little perspective, all my year 17, I was sad and hopeless. Because yeah. <laughs> I got dumped. Right. And, oh. you know, when you're a kid, you don't see anything coming, and everything is the worst thing that could ever... So some of that is that. Right. When you're a teenager, <laughs> you're going to be sad and hopeless of the time. I hate everything. Everyone's going crazy. I don't care if I have no friends. Are you still upset about Lost? Of course I'm upset about Lost. You guys took away my shit before I could watch the last two episodes. I don't know what the fuck happened. But it also said a 40% increase in such feelings in the last 10 years. Also, I thought interesting, uh, they were looking for the reasons why the kids, the CDC, is looking into this. Yeah. Uh, twenty nine percent lost jobs. The parents lost jobs in the pandemic. So, you know, we haven't tallied up all those kind of yeah. negatives that went Public into Public health is a kind of health, too. And I think for adolescents, that's why I have a little leeway if they're 20 years old with the mask on. We really frightened these kids yes. and we took a lot away from them. And they really were living at 14, 15 years old with this idea that they might die and their parents might die and they were completely isolated. And I think we've kind of put a deep, there's a whole generation that we're going to have to look out for a little bit because we did something pretty terrible. Yeah, I, I have an idea. The schools were closed for a motherfucking year. <laughs> In all the major blue cities, they were closed for a year to in-person learning. Kids lost structure, they lost friends, they lost all their extracurriculars, sports, things that made them healthier, places of worship, uh, things they could do with their family. They lost all those things. And they were told, even though they were super low risk, that they were either in danger of dying or in danger of killing their grandmas, and they probably shouldn't complain about it because right. that would make them selfish grandma killers. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Walking home from our house Christmas Eve. That is a very, well, very bad message for children, and it hurt a lot of them. Also, it bothers me because it's it's fake. Now, I'm not saying there aren't some people who live with their grandmas, but this is a country, unlike most countries in the world, that does not invite the elderly into our own homes. We put them... <laughs> how many of you young people who are so worried about giving it to grandma live with your grandma? Well, then that's Very the, few. That's we the put... way this disproportionately hit people from economic step. You know, in the middle class world, moms in, you know, the gated community, I can't wait to get to one. It sounds fantastic. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's check them out.
But I think there are a lot of lower income, doesn't it? You know, just get it really, um, meals are taken care of. But I hear, you know, there's yeah. a lot of low income no. kids in America where the grandmother really takes care of them, which isn't just the caretaking, but that's the person who loves them the most. And I think they had to keep, have had a huge loss yes. of that. No, sure. it's, there does exist that. But there's also, I think, some something disingenuous about that, pretending that we yeah, are sharing yeah. our lives with elderly people who are segregated from our lives. You know, you go to London and people a drink of different ages in the same pub. You'd never see people of different ages in a bar in America. Yeah, and I think, well, we did segregate them into Cuomo's rest, uh, rest homes, which was a bad idea, all the COVID positive ones. Um, no, I, I think, look, there's a limit on power here. There's a limit about what public health can do. I think they sold a message that they couldn't make good on, and Fauci comes out just this week again, and I'm not going to do the accent because I'm not going to hate crime the Italian-Americans. I'd say even if you live alone, I would wear a mask in the house, especially in the shower, because frankly, droplets can make the way through the drain and come up through somebody else's toilet, infecting them with COVID through the anus. But comes out and says like- More than he has. <laughs> but basically like, the court shouldn't be telling me what to do. I'm the unelected uh, health official. Well, that's not actually how the power structure works in this country. And I think they made promises that they couldn't keep and they told people they could keep them from dying, um, right? But th this is an ever-present threat. And then when the mental health crisis happened for these young children, uh, the CDC and all the health officials and all the school officials who told us that closing schools would be no big deal and that learning loss was not a thing and putting them on Zoom and free-ranging them on the internet all day long instead of telling them to play with their friends was gonna be awesome, they tell us they're gonna fix the mental health crisis. Well, I looked at the, uh, the Surgeon General's report that came out about the youth mental health crisis in, uh, in December. Closing schools for a year is literally a footnote. It's literally a footnote in this report. And if you can't deal with that failure, then you can't fix the problem, if you yeah. can't admit that. Well, you can't fix the problem if you don't level with the people and say, you will, it's a virus. It's going to, it's already everywhere. We're breathing it right now. You're soaking in it. <laughs> to win this battle internally i think a lot of you the problem was it started with trump and he was just up there lying so yes, much and we all course. got the sense that he's not telling us the truth and the people who seemed more sincere were the ones who weren't saying that it was going to be over by easter right. and you had one or the other to believe in and we just kind of followed in that tradition and ended up where we did yes and i think that it was fine to believe that at the beginning and then to shift but we, right. the shifting was the part that couldn't happen and a lot of people it couldn't happen because orange man bad bad was saying the opposite right. thing and so they couldn't get on board with that it's always that